so we will discuss the today the continuity of functions we have already seen how to define the functions it's basically a mapping a rule from a set a to a set b such that each element of a we can have a one unique element in b then functions is well defined if there are more than one values of a then we say it is not well defined of course function however when corresponding to each value x we have one value then it is a single value function and for each x if there is more than one values of the uh, image more than one image then we say it is a multi valued function say for example f x is the root x there for each real x positive real x we have two values so it is a multi valued functions so we will include all sort of the functions whether it is a single valued function or multi valued function and when we say f x is a real valued function it means that values of the f x lies in the real so let f x be a real valued function the by the domain of f we mean domain of f we mean the set of those real numbers r set of those real number x belongs to r such that the fx is well defined well defined at this means fx should not be infinity or minus infinity or the functional at x and it must be a finite value well defined normally the domain of f in general the domain of f normally we consider either a open interval or maybe a closed interval or maybe a semi closed interval say like this or even the entire real line r so it depends on the function where it is defined we are not and the set of those values of f is the range of f range of f means those bytes such that uh, there exists some x it's such that f x equal to y for x belongs to the domain of f okay so all the images set is the range of the f so this much we have. now the domain of f or the function when we say the function is defined over a domain a then it's not necessary that function the domain will be a continuous only defined like a b it may be in the break up form maybe the function may not be defined same function may not behave may not be defined over the entire domain it may be if several functions can be in take up over the domain of the f for example if we say f x is say 0 when x is 0 say f x is equal to uh, lying between say um, 1 by n plus 1 less than x less than equal to 1 by n where n is an integer greater than equal to 2 say then the value of this is defined as the one uh, functional f x is defined by 1 by n so in the interval when it is lying between 1 into 1 a half less than x less than equal to 1 the function is defined suppose 1 so this is also a way of defining the fun means a function may be take up of this type of also where the interval the domain of definition is from 0 to 1 but it is not the same function by means of the same function we are not defining over the interval what we are doing what we have here is over the several parts of this interval 0 1 this is 0 1 interval we have a different form of the f at different points or all even at a different sub intervals like this so this will be now there are different types of the functions which we come across the like the rational uh, types of real world function or types of functions which we will come across the first time may be a rational integral function uh, a rational integral function all polynomial we can also say it is a uh, all a polynomial 
which is of the form like a naught plus a 1 x a 2 x square plus a n x to the power n uh, where the coefficients a naught a a naught a 1 a 2 a n these are all constants real constants okay and n is a positive integer positive integer belongs to n so this is also a functional and we denote by p n x a polynomial of degree n another type of the function which we come across about the rational functions rational uh, functions a function f x which is of the form uh, which is uh, of the form p x by q x where p x is also a polynomial say of degree n q x is a polynomial of degree say m what phi of m x is not 0 for any x belongs to the domain of f for ev for every x belongs to a phi m x is not 0 then such a function we call it as a rational function and then a third type of the function which we can approach as algebraic function algebraic function is a function is a function which is or which can be which can be expressed as edge edge the root of root of an equation of the form say y to the power n plus f1 y to the power n minus 1 plus f2 y to the power n minus 2 plus fn equal to 0. We are these f1, f2, fn, these are rational functions of f, where these f, f1, f2, fn are rational functions, functions of x. So, the roots of this equation will be a function, because these are all rational functions coefficients are rational function. So, the roots will be a function and that function we call it as algebraic functions. Then transcendental functions, transcendental function are those functions which are not algebraic is the is that function which is not algebraic function. which is not algebraic function. So, transcendental functions are there. Now, in this case we have seen so many examples like uh, logarithmic functions, logarithmic function and then trigonometric functions like uh, trigonometric functions and then uh, exponential functions all these function we will come across about this. So, we will discuss in general first the continuity of these type of functions and then we will see that these functions which are smooth continuous and also the some uniform continuity will also be tested will be more useful to develop further the theory. Okay. So, let us come to now before going for this applic uh, say definition for continuity, we will also look we require the bounds for it. So, let y or the bounds bound of the functions bounds of functions. In fact, this is when we say the function f x is bounded when we do we say. So, let f y is equal to f x be a real valued function. function define over its domain its domain of definition 
whatever whether it interval or maybe a, a union of the disjoint intervals and like this intervals. The set the values of y the values of y corresponding to corresponding to the different values of x x so this will form a set the values of y corresponding to the different values of x so if the set of set of the values of y corresponding to different values of x if it is bounded if the set of values of y corresponding to different values of x where the x belongs to the domain of f is bounded then we say the function f x is a bounded function. It means that is mod of f x is less than or equal to some constant that is there exists some m greater than 0 such that this is true for all x belongs to the domain of f. What is f x? f x is by basically the value of f at the point x denoted by y. So, if the set of all a set of values of f x if this set is a bounded set then we say the function f is a bounded function and in the similar way the upper and lower bound of this set the upper and lower bound of this set upper and lower bound of this sets are the upper and lower bound upper and lower bound bounds of the function f x that is if one the upper bound of f x then find out the all images and then among these images find the upper bound. So, that upper bound will be the upper bound for f x similarly the lower bound for f x like this. <laughs> if this upper bound is finite fine otherwise a, this may be unbounded set if that upper bound we are not able to get m to be finite. Okay. Now, one more results which we require here that is a theorem given by Westras. The theorem says if a function f x be defined in the interval a b open interval a b then there exist then there exist at least there exist at least one point at least one point in the interval a b in the interval a b such that such that in an arbitrary small in an arbitrary small neighborhood of this point uh, of this point of this point uh, of this point the least upper bound of f x the least upper bound of f x least upper bound of f x is the same age edge in a b. So, what he says is if suppose the function be defined this is a function uh, suppose this is interval and the function is defined everywhere at this everywhere it is the function 
is well defined. Then there exists a point say x naught in the interval a b such that in a very arbitrary small neighborhood if I choose then this function will have the same upper bound as it is in over the entire thing. Say uh, if I choose this function suppose this is only function suppose I take this function this function suppose I take. Okay. Now, you see the upper bound maximum value is attained at this point. Okay. Now, we can find a, a very small a point x naught. So, that in an arbitrary small neighborhood the upper bound of the function f a is the same as the upper bound of the function over the entire range a b. That is what is result says. The proof is obviously, the function is throughout well defined function. The proof is very simple. <laughs> Suppose, uh, the upper bound of this is suppose uh, m, okay. then what we do? And let us find that bisection of this interval such that we get this, uh, uh, let m be the upper bound of this. Okay. So, let m be the upper bound of f x over the interval x belongs to a b. Okay x belongs to a b. This is uh, an upper bound for this. Say least upper bound we can say is this. Uh, if it is close interval then we can say say least upper bound of this in the or in the close interval let it be it is ok no problem. Okay. Now, this interval is given we divide this interval into two parts of equal length. Now, we pick up that interval in which that least upper bound occurs. Okay. Suppose, we have this uh, say this curve suppose like this. Suppose, this curve is. There. So, what we do is we divide this in a two equal intervals and then we pick up the interval a 1 b 1 which is divide a b interval into two equal intervals of length b minus a by 2 each of length this each each of this length. So, let pick call that interval pick up that interval in which the least upper bound is there. So, obviously, here a 1 b 1 in this interval this upper bound lies. Okay. So, this a 1 b 1 call it this call it this interval a 1 b 1 in which the function f x has an upper bound upper bound call it this. Now, this a 1 may coincide with a or b 1 may coincide with b depending on the function. Now, further again divide a 1 b 1 interval into two equal intervals of length equal to b minus a by 2 square and then pick up this call that interval pick up the pick up the interval say a 2 b 2 in which the function f x has an upper bound. So, you are further dividing this into you are further dividing it into two. So, now I am picking up this this is we call it a 2 this is b 2 because in this only the upper bound lies continue this process. So, if I continue this process what happens we are getting in this process when you continue you are getting the sequence uh, of the points a 1 a 2 a n such that a is less than or equal to a 1 less than or equal to a 2 n so on while b is greater than or equal to b 1 greater than or equal to b 2 and so on. 
So, A is an increasing monotonic increasing sequence, B is a monotonic decreasing sequence, but the upper bound of A cannot exceed by B1 and lower bound of this when you take the B1, B2, Bn all these things the lower bound of this will be again when you take uh, B, B1, B2, B1 is an uh, upper bound here is it not. So, this is bounded above this is bounded below and below will be at the most B. <laughs> B. Okay. So, this will be the both are. So, these are the monotonic sequence these are bounded monotonic monotone sequences and we know the bounded monotone sequence of real numbers or rational numbers they are all convergent. So, they will converge. So, they converges. So, they are these are convergent sequence. So, these are convergent sequences. Hence, A n will converge to a point, B n will converge from there. So, we get from here A B. So, A A 1 less than equal to A 2 less than equal to A 3 n B greater than B 1 greater than B 2 and so on. So, A n will go this side B n go this side. So, a point x naught can be trained where the limit of this will coincide. Okay. Why? Because at the nth stage step what we get the difference between B n minus A n will be half to the power n B minus A. So, as n tends to infinity this difference is very very small. Therefore, as n tends to infinity both the sequence a n and b n will tend to the same limit same limit and that limit point is our a say a <coughs> x naught. It means there exists an x naught and a neighborhood around the point x naught will be there in which the upper bound lies. Okay? So, the point x naught the point clearly the point x naught has the required property required property property that is for any sign for any sign for any sign neighborhood delta of x naught delta of x naught contains contains the interval interval a n comma b n for large n so that so the least upper bound of the function f x in delta is m that is what is proved. Okay. So, this is basically is proved and assuming the function is well defined at each point of this. So, the continuity is obviously is taken in consideration here. So, now looking up there now we come formally the definition of continuity. So, there are two ways of defining the continuity one is given by the Cauchy another one is given by Henne. So, Cauchy has taken in the form uh, using the epsilon delta definition that in terms of the intervals while that Henne has defined the continuity of the function in terms of the limit of the sequences, but both these concepts both the definition are basically equivalent definition. So, we will see first what are these definitions and then we will justify that these two definitions are basically an equivalent definition. So, let us see that <coughs> continuity continuity of the function of functions. So, first the definition by Cauchy Cauchy's definition what the Cauchy definition let the domain of continue let f x be a function v of real value function 
function define define over a continuous interval interval a b of course here we are taking a continuous interval but uh, it may be uh, a partly function will also be defined with a different way so over a continuous function uh, interval a b and let y equal to f x be the given values of the function at this interval. Then the function f x, the function f x is set to be continuous is set to be continuous at a point at a point x naught in the interval a b if for a given f signal greater than 0 or if corresponding to an arbitrary if corresponding to an arbitrary corresponding to an arbitrarily uh, choosing arbitrary choosing positive number f signal positive number f signal howsoever small may be however small however small okay. uh, and another there exist corresponding to this there exist are positive number delta which depends on epsilon as well as on the point x naught such that such that the modulus of f x minus f x minus f x naught is less than epsilon provided mod of x minus x naught is less than delta okay <laughs> it means what the meaning is this a function f is continuous at a point x naught if for a corresponding to a assigned arbitrary choosing positive number f sign up corresponding to arbitrary choosing positive number f sign up there exist a delta there exist a delta depends on f signal depends on f signal so such that this condition hold it means that if we take f signal is given then we can find out a neighborhood of x naught say x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta a neighborhood can be obtained with respect to this given f sign with respect to the bond which is given here such that the image of any point x will always fall within this range will always fall within this range that is here is say f x naught then the range fluctuation of this will be f x naught minus f sign l f x naught plus f sign the mode of f x minus f x naught less than a, this implies the f x lies between f x naught minus f sign l and f x naught plus f sign l and this we mean that x lies between x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta it may so if f is continuous then a neighborhood of the x naught exists such that image of any point x in this neighborhood will always satisfy this condition that it will always fall within this two f sign or bits of that step whatever the point you choose if so then we say it is a function it means the total fluctuation the fluctuation of the function of the function f x in the interval 
x naught minus delta to x naught plus delta is what the is basically the difference between these two upper and the lower bound. So, x naught plus epsilon l minus f x naught minus epsilon l and that is equal to 2 epsilon. So, if this fluctuation is less than 2 epsilon which is less than less than this 2 epsilon very very small number then we say the function is continuous. So, this is also considered as a necessary condition for the function. So, we can say important note we can say uh, uh, the function f x the function f x is continuous at a point at a point function f x is continuous at a point if a neighborhood if a neighborhood if a neighborhood of the point neighborhood of the point a neighborhood of the point can be determined can be determined in which in which the fluctuation the fluctuation is as small as be please as small as be please as we please. So, this is also this is considered as a necessary condition because if this does not satisfy the function cannot be continuous function. For example, suppose I take this graph say this is our graph point x naught is here function f is this. Now, however small with this given f sign up say with this given f sign up I take this point is say f x naught. So, this point is f x naught minus f sign up this point will be f x naught plus f sign up and here this is f x naught. So, for this f sign up this is the width 2 f sign up for a given f sign up if we get there must exist an interval neighborhood around the point x naught such that the fluctuation should not exceed by f sign up, but what a pin if it suppose I take this neighborhood ok this is our neighborhood like this. So, as soon as you take this point say here this is point here as soon as this point the corresponding image of this will go here it means the fluctuation may exceed by 2 f sign up. So, it cannot be made as small as we please and this is because there is no continuity of the curve at this point x naught. So, such a function will not be considered as a continuous function. So, that is the important that is why we say this is a case of discontinuity continuous function case of discontinuity discontinuity ok because of this thing. So, that is why it is necessary. Now, as a corollary of this uh, um, of course, the um, we further extend this suppose a function is given over a closed interval the domain of definition is closed interval and when we say the function is continuous over the closed interval then what we do we take the open interval first and then at the point a and b also be tested. But before a the function may not be defined after b the function may also not be defined. So, we have to modify our definition of the continuity at the end point of the interval. So, we say the function is said to be the function the function is said to be f x is said to be continuous at continuous on the right on the right at x naught. Suppose, this is x naught on the right means this side 
this side okay on from the right hand side this is right on the right of x naught right on the right at x naught at x naught on uh, a function is said to be continuous right if the fluctuation if the fluctuation of the function if the fluctuation of the function uh, in a neighborhood of x naught if the fluctuation of the function in a neighborhood of x naught on the right on the right that is that is x naught x naught plus delta this is a neighborhood on the right of this if the fluctuation of the function in the neighborhood of x naught on the right of uh, x naught on the right each edge is small edge b please then we say the function is continuous at a point x naught from the right hand side similarly the function is said to be continuous on the left the function f x is said to be continuous on the left left of x naught if the fluctuation if the fluctuation of the function in a neighborhood in a neighborhood of x naught on the left on the left means that is x naught minus delta x naught on the left is edge small edge b please so that's the important for okay so now we can define the uh, function over the uh, continuity in the interval so we define as a continuity of the function continuity in the interval the function f x function f x defined for a continuous interval defined for a continuous interval a b continuous interval a b is said to be is said to be continuous is said to be continuous in the interval a b in that interval a b that is at each point if it is continuous if it is continuous if it is continuous at every point at every point of the interval Okay. If it is a closed, similarly, we say f x is continuous, f x is continuous in the closed interval or over the closed interval a b, over the closed interval a b, uh, if it is, if it is continuous at every point at every point of the open interval of the open interval a b of the open interval a b and continuous on and continuous 
and continuous on the right at x equal to a and continuous and continuous on the left at x equal to b. <laughs> then we say the function is continuous. Okay. Now, let us take an example which is using the epsilon delta definition. Suppose prove that f x equal to sin x is continuous function is continuous say over the interval 0 to pi by 2. In fact, it is continuous everywhere because it is a periodic function. So, we can say it is okay. say 0 to pi by 2 is continuous. In fact, it is continuous over the entire real line r over the entire real line r. So, the proof is simple. Suppose f sin r is given greater than 0 is given. Okay. We have to identify delta depends on f sin. So, that the mod of f x minus f x not less than f sin is less than f sin provided x minus x not less than delta. So, consider this consider mod of f x minus f x naught. We are let x naught be a point in this interval suppose okay or all then what is this this is sin x minus sin x naught but this is equal to 2 times sin x plus x naught by 2 into sin x minus x naught by 2 mode of this which is less than equal to now sin of this thing is a bounded function bounded by 1 so, this is less than equal to 1 and this sign will be less than equal to mod x minus x naught. Why? Because mod of sign because the sign x is less than equal to x for x lying between 0 and pi by 2. Sin 0 is 0, sin 90 is pi by 2 or even 0 to pi it will help. Okay, so, any interval you can just say this is. In fact, this can be extended for any x real x. Okay, so, this is 2. Now, if I take the f delta, so it choose delta equal to f sin r. So, if this is less than delta, obviously this will less than f sin r. So, this shows that sin x is continuous at x naught, but x naught is an arbitrary. So, it is continuous everywhere and even if we take interval sin x is basically is continuous over any close any open interval a b or in the real line in fact this one can prove easily so this is one of the example which we have i have chosen now corollary uh, there is one small result which we call the corollary uh, if f x is continuous if f x is continuous at a point x naught and f x naught is positive then then f x is positive over the entire interval x naught minus x x naught plus delta means if the function is continuous at point and at the point x naught it is positive function it is a positive function graph is up then we can find a neighborhood where the function will remain positive okay the reason is because it is continuous so this condition is satisfied for a given f sin l greater than 0 there exist a delta depending on f sin l such that this is true provided mod of x minus x not less than delta so when the x lies between this then what happened? This shows the f x is lying between f x naught plus f sin l greater than f x naught minus f sin l. So, if I choose f sin l to be half of f x naught, then obviously f x will always be greater than the will be basically 
half of f x naught because of the left hand side which is positive. So, this is true for all x belongs to the neighborhood uh, neighborhood of x naught neighborhood of x naught with the radius delta. Okay? So, this two this now uh, Hannibal definition for n definition of continuity given by Hanne. This is given in terms of the sequence. So, what he says let x 1 x 2 x n x 1 x 2 x n be a convergent sequence convergent sequence of real numbers say of real numbers or points on the real line in the given interval a b in the given interval whose limit is limit is say a limit is say a the function f x by definition of the function f x is said to be continuous is said to be continuous at a point a if for every such sequence for every such convergence sequences sequences x n every such convergence sequence x n the sequence of their functionals value sequence of numbers functional value means it is in numbers now f of x n this is real numbers converges to f of a that is the meaning is a f is continuous at a point x equal to say uh, x equal to a if the limit of the function f x when x tends to a exist and coincide with the functional value at a. This definition is if and only if. In fact, this is the definition given by this. Uh, it is okay if this condition. Okay. In fact, it is part uh, if and only if also function b. So, what it says is that if we take a sequence x n which converges to a then f of x n will go to f a that is the definition given by the Henny. Now, these two definitions are basically equivalent definition. The equivalence of Cochise and Henny's definition of continuity. Continuity. So, let us assume the function is continuous. Assume f x is continuous continuous in accordance in according to Cauchy Cauchy's it means that is for a given f signal greater than 0 there will exist a delta depending on f signal such that mod of f x minus f x naught continuous at x naught f x naught is less than f signal provided mod of x minus x naught less than delta. Suppose this is true. Okay. Now, let us consider <coughs> a sequence x n a convergent sequence a convergent sequence x n having the limit a means x n sequence converges to a. So, by definition so by definition so modulus of x n minus a is less than say delta for all n greater than equal to say capital a small m say because limit of x n is a. So, x n minus a will remain less than after a certain stage, but if x n lies it now this implies that x n lies between a minus delta and a plus delta for all n greater than equal to m and for such point which lies in this one 
satisfy this condition so using one what we get is mod of f x n minus f x naught uh, yes uh, continuous at x naught so here x naught uh, actually i have taken a limit is x naught let us take x naught here so x naught so here is x naught this is also x naught because in place of this so f x naught this will remain less than epsilon r for all n greater than equal to n therefore limit of f x n as n tends to infinity is f x naught hence hennish definition follows hence by hennish definition f is continuous at x naught conversely conversely suppose hennish definition suppose f x is f is continuous at x naught in accordance to hennish definition hennish definition suppose this suppose we say it's continuous in accordance with but but cauchy definition is not cauchy's definition is not is not satisfied that is for a given f sign r greater than 0 for a given f sign r greater than 0 there exist points there exist points in the interval in the interval say x naught minus delta x naught plus delta for which the fluctuation mod of f x minus f x naught exceed by any given number f sign naught. However small delta may be. Delta may be. So what do you mean by this? This means if you take a sequence which is in this, okay, then all these sequence. So let us take a consider consider a sequence a sequence uh, delta n of decreasing nature which decreases to zero, converges to zero, such that sequence delta n we converge to zero uh, such that and x n be a point belongs to this x naught minus delta n x naught plus delta n if we take this point in this sequence of the point in this interval then in then according to the second implies that mod of f x n minus f x naught will greater than equal to f sin r. This shows the limit of the f x n as n tends to infinity as uh, sorry as x tends to x naught that is n tends to infinity mean x n n tends to infinity is not equal to f x naught. So function f is not continuous at x naught all is contradicts the definition of this. Therefore, this assumption that Cauchy definition is not very satisfied is wrong here for this. Okay? Thank you very much. So, this was the equivalence of this.